It has been known for decades that elephants are intelligent animals that live in complex and highly organized social groups. Elephant family units consist of a head female, the matriarch, and about a dozen or so related females and their offspring. Family units show patterns of association with up to five other family units, creating a larger group called a bond group. Male elephants leave their family units when they hit puberty and travel with other adult males, searching for sexually receptive females. Elephant families must constantly be moving in search of food and water. These movements are sometimes coordinated over very long distances. Groups have been seen to respond to the movements of other groups at distances of up to 5 kilometers or about 3 miles when the direction of the wind precluded the possibility of scent-based communication. Even more incredible is the fact that, even though males and females travel separately, they are still able to find each other during their very short, sexually active periods to mate, across miles and miles of distance. So how are these animals able to coordinate activity and communicate with one another across such great distances without us even picking up on it? The answer is infrasonic calls. Humans, at their most receptive, are able to hear sounds between 20 and 20,000 hertz. Sounds higher pitched than our limit are called ultrasonic, like bat echolocation, and sounds lower than our limit are called infrasonic, like elephants. Infrasonic calls, because of their longer wavelengths, are less subject to obstruction by the environment and are therefore able to travel longer distances. Scientists studying elephant behavior have found that much of elephant communication lies in this realm of sound, sound that we humans can't even hear, and that can travel much further distance than the typical elephant trumpet. So what kinds of things are elephants saying to each other with these low rumbles, and how do they explain the complex, long-distance network of interaction within a population? First, let's discuss how family groups stay together, how individual elephants maintain contact and find each other if separated. One of the most fundamental elephant calls is the contact call and contact answer. When an individual elephant has become separated from her family group for whatever reason, she will engage in this call. To the human ear, little more than a soft rumble is heard, but she's actually producing a powerful infrasonic sound that can travel miles to her family. If her family is within hearing range, she will receive back a unique contact answer. The elephants continue this routine to make sure that they stay in contact, are aware of each other's locations, and then eventually reunite. In times of especially sparse food and water, this strategy is particularly useful. Families may spread out across their environments to distances of up to 5 kilometers for as long as several weeks so that they can serve energy and allow each elephant its own plot of vegetation to consume. Without being able to stay in touch at such a distance, families might not be able to remain whole. Elephants can recognize calls from members of their family group and selectively respond to those, while ignoring calls that come from more distantly related or unrelated individuals. Elephants also communicate greetings when they have been separated and commands about where they should be foraging and when they should move on from a specific location. These basic calls help maintain cohesion, recognition, and coordination in family groups. Infrasonic communication is also vital in elephant reproduction. Like mentioned earlier, adult males and females do not travel together and only associate with each other at times of mating. Both males and females have specific states of sexual receptiveness, musts for males and estrus for females, which drive them to mate. When males are in musts, which can happen at any time of year and usually last about three months, they separate from their groups of adult males in search of females in estrus. But estrus usually only peaks for about three days, so the male elephants have to know exactly which female is currently receptive and where to find her, without being able to see or smell her. To do this, males produce a low-frequency sound called the must rumble. They make this pulsing sound several times an hour and listen for responses from receptive females, dubbed a female chorus. Similar to the back-and-forth routine used by separated family members, the males and females repeat these calls until they are united and continue them to communicate to each other that they are receptive. Must calls are also used by males to avoid other males in must. If two must males encounter each other, they become very aggressive and may fight over a female. Because the males want to avoid conflict with each other, they listen for other musk calls to determine which groups of females are safe to travel to. But these infrasonic calls don't only travel from elephant to elephant through the air. Recently, scientists have found that elephants can detect their companions' calls by feeling their vibrations through the earth. At even further distances than the several miles they can hear signals, elephants are able to use special vibration receptive cells called Pacinian corpsicles on the bottoms of their feet and the tips of their trunks to feel calls. An entire group of elephants will be seen freezing in place, touching the tips of their trunks to the ground, and then rotating to face the source of the call. Elephants interpret these seismic signals as messages, and even associate them with specific callers. Just how elephants can be so accurate in their reception and interpretation of these vibrations, and how feeling and hearing work together to receive signals, is still being researched. 31 distinct calls have been described for the African elephant, most of which are a majority infrasonic. Each call has a specific pattern of sound and is associated with a particular physical behavior and social goal. Elephants use these calls to recognize individuals, to coordinate feeding and traveling decisions, to find mates, and to warn of predators, all across distances of miles and all inaudible to the human ear. The major takeaway of this fascinating behavior of the largest living land mammal is that humans are limited in our perceptions of the world. Before the means to record and describe these infrasonic sounds were invented, scientists were baffled by the elephant's ability to communicate across such great distances. 
The human point of view is only one of the many that the beautiful process of evolution has brought to this planet, and we need to remember that there is so much going on in the lives of animals that is beyond our perception and comprehension. Environmental scientist David Lerome said it best. Like all creatures, humans perceive with limited spectra and sensory modes. We bias research with the unconscious and incorrect assumption that other animals see the world as we do. Every time we discover otherwise, it expands the horizons of scientific knowledge and sends us the humbling and vital message that we are not, after all, the measure of all things.